Hello and welcome to Ott and Math. In this edition of Ott and Math, we're going to talk about solving rational equations. Before we get started, let's talk about terms and definitions. Lowest or least common denominator. What is the lowest or the least common denominator? Well, it's the smallest positive integer that is a multiple of the denominators. Right, so what does that mean? Smallest positive integer, so our whole number, that is a multiple of the denominators. All right, so let's take, let's take a couple of easy examples in the bottom of the page of one over six plus one over two. So I wanna find the smallest positive integer that is a multiple of the denominators. Well, six <clears throat> is a multiple of itself, All right? So six times one is six. Two times three gives me six. So the smallest positive integer that is a multiple of the denominators is gonna end up being six. In my second uh, expression in the bottom right-hand corner of the page, two over three minus one over four. I need to find the smallest positive integer that is a multiple of the denominators. So I have a multiple of three. Three is a multiple of three. Three times one. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine. Three times four is 12. So 12 is gonna be the smallest positive integer that is a multiple of both denominators because I have three, six, nine, 12 in order for my denominator in the left-hand term, and then four, eight, and 12 are gonna be the smallest positive multiples, or a, they're gonna be multiples of four, and the smallest multiple is gonna be 12 in this case. So my smallest positive integer that is a multiple of the denominators and this bottom right-hand corner is gonna be 12. So I had six here, 12 here. Now in the upper left expression, I have two over x plus three over two. Now this one's a little bit more tricky, and typically what I do as a strategy is I, I think to myself, what are the multiples, the first couple of multiples of x? I have x, two x, three x, four x. None of those are going to be, um, actually two x is gonna end up being the smallest positive integer that is a multiple of the denominators. But I think to myself, okay, x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, those are all multiples of x. This is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8. In some cases, we just might need to multiply, again, using our strategy from the prior lesson in 8.5, 8 multiply the uh, denominator of the second by both the numerator and denominator of the first, and the denominator of the first term by both the numerator and denominator of the second. So it might end up that the smallest positive integer that is a multiple of the denominators is just the denominator of the first times the denominator of the second. And in fact, 2x is gonna be your smallest positive or lowest common denominator for this expression. In the same fashion, I'm gonna have x minus one times x plus two as my smallest or least common denominator for the second expression. So sometimes I might just have to multiply the denominators of each to figure out what the lowest common denominator is. Sometimes I can find out what the multiples of each of the denominators are and then figure out what the lowest common denominator is. All right, let's move on. Okay, so solving rational equations. I have three methods for you and you can use them in different situations. So the first is going to be cross multiplication. I can use cross multiplication to solve a rational equation when each side of the equation is a single rational expression or a single fraction, let's say. So in this case, what I, what I mean by uh, cross multiplication, if I have a value A over B is equal to C over D, then when I cross multiply, I'm gonna multiply the numerator on the left times the denominator on the right. So I end up with AD is equal to by the or product of B times C or the denominator of the first times the numerator of the second. So that's what's called cross multiply because we're crossing over the equal sign. All right, so let's use that method on this particular equation because I have uh, single rational expressions in each side of the equation. So I have seven times two x minus 10, seven times two x minus 10, then is equal to 11 times x minus two. So now all I have to do is distribute, simplify, and then solve. Seven times two x is 14x, 
minus 7 times 10, which is minus 70, is equal to 11 times x, or 11x, minus 11 times negative 2, negative 22. Now I'm going to simplify a 14x minus 11x gives me 3x. I add 70 to both sides, and I get, if I'm not mistaken, positive 48. So x is going to be equal to 16. All right, so method number one, when I have single rational expressions on both sides of the equation, I can just cross multiply and then solve for x. All right, now what happens if I have, uh, if I'm, I don't have a proportion or single rational expressions on both sides of the equation? In this case, I have two fractions that are added together is equal to some value. What I want to do in method number two is to multiply by the lowest common denominator or a common denominator of each of the denominators for each of the terms in the equation. So I can see that a common denominator in, uh, and also what's going to be the lowest common denominator is going to be 4x. So 4x uh, times 5x times 7 over 4 times negative 9 over x. So I determine the lowest common denominator of all of the terms. I determine that it's 4x. Then I want to multiply the lowest common denominator by all the terms. Right, so let's take the first term, 5 over x. So I have 4 over x, which is the same as 4 over x, or 4x, excuse me, 4x, which is the same as 4x over 1, times 5 over x. So I'm handling the first, the product of the first term times the lowest common denominator, and I get 20x over x, which is equal to just 20. Right, so I'm going to write that in here, 20, and I'm going to erase this first part. And I'm going to go to my second term, 7 over 4, and I'm going to multiply that by 4x over 1. I have 4 and 4, which reduce to 1, so I'm left with 7x. So I add 7x. And now I'm going to handle the third term, or the value on the right-hand side of the equation, negative 9 over x. Negative 9 over x times 4 over x x's common factor reduced to 1, negative 9 times 4 is equal to negative 36. Now I'm going to simplify this equation. I have 7x is equal to negative 56, and then x is equal to negative 8. All right, so the second method is to determine the lowest common denominator, or a common denominator of all the terms, and then multiply each of the terms by that common denominator and solve for x. Right, method number three, I can take that uh, same equation that I had for method number two. I can rewrite the left, uh, left and right-hand side of the equation as a single fraction or single expression and then cross-multiply. So it's kind of a combination or a hybrid of both method number one and number two. So I'm going to find the lowest common denominator of uh, 5x and 7 over 4, and I'm going to rewrite the left-hand side of the equation as a single rational expression. So remember, I need in, in order to add fractions together, I need to have a common denominator. I determine it's 4x. So now I have 5 times 4 over x times 4 plus 7 times x over x times 4. And that gives me 20 plus 7x over 4x. Now, I've simplified the left-hand side of the equation as a single rational expression. I can use method number one, which is the cross-multiplication method, to solve for x. Okay, so I'm just going to erase this here, and I'm going to work to the left. I have x times 20 uh, plus x times 7x, so it gives me 20x plus 7x squared is equal to negative 9 times 4x is equal to negative 36x. Then I'm going to use my zero product property, which says that uh, any value times zero is equal to zero. I'm going to set the right-hand side of the equation equal to zero by adding 36 to both sides. So I have 7x squared plus 56x, or 20x plus 36, is equal to zero. I take a common factor, uh, my common monomial is going to be 7x, so I'm left with x plus 8 is equal to 0. 
Now I have to figure out the values of x that make this equation true. This is going to be 0, so 7 times 0 would be 0. And x in the second case is going to be negative 8. So my two possible values for x would be 0 and negative 8. Now I see that uh, there I have both or two terms in which x is uh, the denominator. I can't have a value of 0 for the denominator. So the answer or solution of 0 is not going to work out. It's going to be an extraneous solution. So the result is negative 8. Now you can see if we go back to the method number 2, I get the same answer, but in this case I'm using a different process. All right, so let's go back through the methods. Uh, method number 1, cross multiplication. If I have a single rational expression on either side of the equal sign, so I have some type of proportion. If I don't have a single rational expression, I can take the lowest common denominator of all the terms, multiply each of the terms by the lowest common denominator, uh, simplify the expression, solve for x. Or method number three, I can simplify uh, multiple expressions or uh, fractions into one on both sides of the equation and then use cross-multiplication.